from 15 when I started training to 19, I didn't even know steroids existed. I started using and I just exploded. Today, the desirable male aesthetic, promoted by TV shows like Love Island and Romans, and the social media feeds of a growing band of fitness influencers, is of bulging biceps and washboard stomachs. Although there's no suggestion that the contestants use anabolic steroids to achieve their physiques, it remains a look that many young men feel can only be reached through the use of the controversial drug. You injected on video and put it on YouTube. I did, and that was more of an educational stance that I was trying to come from. The uneducated public regard a steroid user as a big hulking animal who's more likely to either beat you or rape you. But do the recent statistics showing a fourfold increase in their use really add up? Public Health England says there's 70,000 steroid users in the UK. There's a lot more than that. I wanted to find out if the stigma around the drug was fairly earned and why people continue to see it as a quick route to an impressive build. Ooh, and relax. I'm injecting one mil of androgen pharmaceuticals. Tom Moore is a videographer and fitness coach who uses his YouTube channel to present a view of steroids at odds with the dark stereotype. 0.5 mil. A couple of guys from The Guardian coming around to do a piece on steroid usage and the Love Island effect. Hello? It's Tom there. Today's video is essentially going to be a little vlog style. So it's going to be more of just maybe like me and my girlfriend, our day-to-day -day activities and things I'm like that. I'm your really. girlfriend. This isn't my girlfriend, no. This is my boyfriend. How did you get into it? With the YouTube, it was just a very basic... I've just started doing steroids and I want to almost share my story, really. You get a lot of messages on YouTube mm. from yeah. young people who are interested in finding out more about steroid use. Yeah. The first thing that a 16, 17, 18 year old comes to me and asks is, what should I be doing? And the first thing I say to him is, you need to get that thought out of your head. Yeah. We seem to have entered this phase now where we've bypassed what should I be taking in the sense of like whey protein. That's gone now. It's like, what steroid should I be taking? I jab sussed in my delts. I, I want to try it in my biceps just because I'm doing biceps today, so. How do you know what you're doing? Where, where do you get your information from? Through just credible sources online, really. My mum's a nurse as well. So it always helps. So when I very first started off with injections, it was very simple. She, what does she think about this? My mum's very, and dad and girlfriend and friends and family are very much like, well, he's doing it the safe way. Mm -hmm. And if it came to the point and the period of time in which the doctor said, look, this is, you need to come off, I can then mentally go, okay, my health is more important. It is fucking shake time. <laughs> Earlier this year, two American bodybuilders died in quick succession. I was competing on stage and I was at a point where I was getting blown off the stage if I wasn't going to do steroids, so I took that step and that's the road I chose. Although steroids were not blamed for the deaths of Rich Piana and Dallas McCarver, their open association with the drug ensured plenty of column inches drawing a link. There's been a couple of high-profile deaths recently has. in the bodybuilding world. What impact do you think that's had on steroids and, and the stigma? It happens stigma? every time someone who's known to use steroids dies. If I was still 450 pounds, whether I was using steroids or not, I'd have all sorts of health implications. Sure. It is difficult to say steroids cause that death, but I think it's sensible to say there's a role in there somewhere. Dave Crosland rose to prominence through his documentary, Under Construction, which saw him push the limits of his body through excessive anabolic usage. I visited him as he tried to spread the word about safer steroid use at the Northwest Strength Expo in Manchester. When you wander around places like this, can you spot a steroid user like that? You used to be able to, not anymore. Because? Steroid users are notoriously quiet about what they do particularly to any official source. They don't report problems to the GP because there's quite a lot of prejudice within National Health Service. The fact is that users are very reluctant to go for medical help, and when they do, they're even more reluctant to admit that they use. One place where steroids and their effects are openly discussed is Brunel University's Sports Sciences Department. There's a stigma around mm -hmm. steroid use. Mm -hmm. 
Is there any way of tackling that? I mean, how do we reach these people who are largely underground? The stigma is there because they are generally dangerous drugs to take and you have to buy them. They're illegal. They are contrary to the Medicines Act and the Misuse of Drugs Act. So that's where the stigma is coming from. But I think without educating people first about uh, what the deleterious effects could be, I think we would be doing a disservice to people who are choosing to use them. They're often choosing to use them because they look big and muscly on the dance floor quite often. Mm. And, um, and I think we've got to start thinking about uh, image and perception, body image, all that kind of stuff. Where for women, we went through a phase of size zero. For men, they can never be big enough. But steroids don't guarantee six packs. And young men who become involved with the drug can be at risk from unwanted side effects. And I Imagine I'm a young guy and I come up to you and I say, I'm really interested in all these weights I keep lifting, mm -hmm. but I just want that extra thing and the protein shakes aren't cutting it. I just want something else. You can try your best to obviously sway them in the right direction. Hopefully that would be enough, but then again, I mean. Is it best if I try and educate them rather than say, no, don't do it? Go ahead and crack out. Yeah, please, yeah. <laughs> if, that's, if that's the terminology yeah. you prefer to use. <laughs> You guys are early, mid-twenties. Do you see a pressure in sort of conforming to a certain body type? These programmes on TV that are showing kind of these uh, super ripped guys getting with these kind Love of... Island, for yeah. instance. Yeah. <laughs> right. I didn't want to name names, but yeah. <laughs> There's always part of your mind that thinks, if I had bigger arms, if I had bigger shoulders, would people still ridicule me? Would they still take the mick out of me? Back at the expo, I met Emil Hodjevic, an A&E doctor who, despite not using steroids, embodies the physical goal for many young men. I did strongman in my past. Yeah. And more recently, I've taken up bodybuilding. That's me. You know, you sit down, you get rolls. Yeah, yes. And then I stand up and I have a six pack. Yeah. Wow, hello. Having a six pack doesn't make you happy. And if you take steroids, then that will only exacerbate those symptoms. So psychological issues associated with steroid use and just with dieting to these extremes is a hugely unappreciated and untapped area. Do doctors need to know more about it? You know, doctors are already under the cosh in terms of workload and just dealing with the NHS in its current state. I mean, if you compare steroids with alcohol, people who have problems with alcohol will get help. People who have problems with steroids might not. Because steroids get associated with cheating, they've automatically got this black mark against them. Anabolic steroids are clearly not without their dangers. But until we address the stigma around them, Britain's steroid problems will remain underground, with users reluctant to seek the medical assistance they need.